Hey guys, this is Don Exodus, and my talk today revolves around creationist dishonesty, that is, the group claiming the moral high ground and how dishonest they truly are. This can be divided into three aspects. First is deception, second is quote mining, and the third is the way that they exploit fear. So, let's talk about their deception. So 99.98% of scientists accept evolution. There are four times more historians rejecting the Holocaust than there are scientists rejecting evolution. In the scientific community, there's absolutely no debate. Unfortunately, the creationism relies on creating the dishonest illusion of a divided scientific community. As of 11.26.7, there are over 200,000 articles on PubMed referencing evolution, zero of them rejecting common ancestry. Now, for comparison, there are two papers on intelligent design, none of which support intelligent design. So to recap, there are over 200,000 supporting evolution and none supporting intelligent design. Dr. Mellet pretty much sums up my views as to the why won't evolutionist debate creationist concept, and that is that I wouldn't debate them for the same reason I wouldn't debate someone who said the Earth is hollow. They simply want to gain credibility by making the arguments appear equal when they're not. The next aspect of creationism dishonesty comes from the downright lies that they tell. For example, all mutations are bad. We know this is not true, for example, see antibiotic resistance. That's due for mutations, and it clearly helps out the organism. Second of all, I didn't come from a monkey. Nobody says that. That's a dishonest straw man deliberately created by creationists to mislead the public. No scientist thinks that we came from a monkey, we simply share a common ancestor. There's a big difference. Third, evolution is just a theory. For example, other theories, the cell theory, the atomic theory, the theory of gravity. Scientific theories are different than the term theory that we use in everyday talk. And lastly, there are no transitional forms. Now this is a downright lie. We have hundreds of them between nearly every category that we could hope for. We've got them between fish and amphibians, amphibians and reptiles, reptiles and mammals, and reptiles and birds. Furthermore, the human evolution is one of the most well-documented forms of evolution that we have. For example, how do you explain Neanderthals? DNA confirms that they weren't human, yet at the same time, they cared for their handicap and buried their dead. How can creationism account for this? Now, the following creationist quotes pertain to quote mining, which is intentionally taking quotes out of context to support your agenda. Also note this is bearing false witness and completely immoral. Now, a perfect example of quote mining can be seen regarding Charles Darwin himself in The Origin of Species. In it, Darwin says that to suppose the eye could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. Now, what creationists don't tell you, however, is that the remaining two chapters where Darwin goes on to explain exactly how the eye could have formed. For example, merely three sentences later, Charles Darwin says that if such variations should be useful to any animal under changing conditions of life, then the difficulty of believing that a perfect and complex eye could be formed by natural selection, though insuperable by our imagination, should not be considered subversive of the theory. Just another example of creationists being blatantly dishonest to support their views. Nonetheless, this is completely irrelevant because, believe it or not, a lot has changed in science in the past 150 years, so Darwin's perspective on the situation at the time is relatively useless. Next on our list of consistently quote mined scientists is Dr. Alan Fiducia of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where I actually currently attend, and I studied quite a bit of his work in my undergrad. What Dr. Fiducia deals with is especially dealing with Archaeopteryx, which is a transitional bird, transitional species fossil rather, between um, birds and dinosaurs, is trying to determine which group of dinosaurs birds evolved from. Now there are two theories. Dr. Fiducia tends to like the, the one where the ancestors were tree dwelling and that's how they developed the flight architecture. The opposing school of thought is that they evolved on just terrestrial organisms or reptiles rather living on the ground. Now, here you see answers in Genesis. Title of the page, Archaeopteryx, is not a hoax. It is a true bird, but not a missing link. So what do they do? They take a quote from Dr. Fiducia saying, Paleontologists have tried to turn Archaeopteryx into an earthbound feathered dinosaur. But it's not. It's a bird. A perching bird, and no amount of paleobabble is going to change it. Now, Dr. Fiducia is not saying whatsoever that it's not a transitional form, or that it is completely avian. What he is saying is simply that its ancestors lived in the trees, and they did not um, derive, and it was not 
derived from an earthbound feathered dinosaur. And the thing is, people at Answers in Genesis know this. They are deliberately presenting this quote to make it seem like that's not the case whatsoever. So, curious about this and wanting to confirm my existing suspicions, I wrote Dr. Fiducia about it. I spent the entire day in the same building with him. I wanted to get his answer in writing. Now, this is the email Dr. Fiducia sent to me a couple months ago. It says, yes, of course this is preposterous. I was the person who coined the phrase in 1980 that Archaeopteryx is a Rosetta Stone of evolution. Archaeopteryx is clearly a transitional form between reptiles and birds. The question is, which group of reptiles? He then goes on to explain um, a couple things which just reinforces belief. But the bottom line is that it's obvious that this is not what he meant. Anybody who studies his work knows that. The creationists know that too, but they continually just take quotes out of context to support their agenda, bearing false witness at its finest. At the end of his email, I thought it was rather interesting, he says, at any rate, count on the creationists to misquote people to foster their cause, which is very true, because it's exactly what they do. Now this next quote is from Dr. Richard Dawkins on a leading creationist website. He says, the more statistically improbable a thing is, the less we can believe that it just happened by blind chance. Superficially, the obvious alternative to chance is an intelligent designer. Well, unfortunately, evolution has nothing to do with chance. Natural selection is the very opposite of chance. So, he says, of course, that the obvious alternative to chance is an intelligent designer, and then goes on to explain how evolution is not chance whatsoever. And at the very end, he says... Darwin's theory is now supported by all the available revi relevant evidence, and its truth is not doubted by any serious modern biologist. Now, the person who quote mined this had to have seen the quote to get it, and, and had he read the very next sentence, he goes on to explain exactly how it's true. Another example of creationists deliberately taking something out of context to support their agenda.